now back to the country two years after the Second World War ended in 1945 in Gilgil, Nakuru County. One woman was so grateful that her two sons had returned from the war alive that she built a church to thank God. Eleanor Cole also dedicated the church to her late husband, one of the earliest settlers in the country. Sixty years, 66 years later rather, the church still stands. The Goodwill Church in Gilgil has furniture from the 1940s and has retained its original architectural design with few modifications. Rita Tanina has details of the decades-old church and the settler who was deported for shooting an African. Just a few kilometers from the Nairobi Nakuru Highway in Gilgil stands a little known stone chapel. But if history is anything to go by, this is one unique church. Named the Church of Goodwill, history has it that it was built around 1947. The Goodwill Church uh, was constructed uh, by a lady called Elena Ko. She was the wife of uh, Lord uh, Gabriel Ko. Lord Gabriel Cole was one of the pioneer European settler farmers in the country. He was a brother-in-law to Lord Delamere, who married Cole's sister Florence. In fact, it was Lord Delamere who gifted Lord Galbraith Cole with at least 30,000 acres of land that Cole named Kikope Ranch. Lord Galbraith Cole's widow Eleanor had the Church of Goodwill built and immediately upon its completion, and she dedicated this church to her husband in 1947. That was 20 years after Lord Galbraith Cole's death and Eleanor had more reasons for building the church. And uh, she constructed the church in order to thank God for her two sons who went to World War II and then they came back alive. Close to seven decades later, little betrays the number of years that this structure has stood here. The church has maintained its original design. Aside from minor repairs to the cracks on the walls, everything else is as it was in the late 1940s. The altar has not been modified at all. Even the chairs are the same ones that were brought into the church some 66 years ago. The pulpit stand, that one too, is from the 1940s. This is one place that would be the envy of many antique collectors, from the candle holders made in a generation gone by to the flower stands. It is evident someone paid attention to detail when designing the items. The church bell may no longer be in use, but it's here in its original position, complete with a bell tower. The Lamu-style door may have that aging wooden look, but it still serves the same purpose it was meant to those many years back. On this door, it is only the padlock that is modern. From the inside, the 1940s idea of a door latch, and it is still in use to date. The church does not have glass windows, but the colonial architects had their own innovative ideas. The split level design on the walls was meant to allow light into the church. It still works in these modern times. These seemingly little spaces let in enough daylight into the church. We find that uh, it's necessary for it to be conserved the way it is so that it can be conserved as a monument and also as a tourist attraction site. The cathedral style ceiling in this church too has not seen any modifications. And the safe, well, from the look of it, anything stored here would have been safe, quite literally. <laughs> the tithe box and hymn board have benefited from a coat of varnish and some plastic chairs have been added to help accommodate the increased number of worshippers here. It is used as a normal church and uh, it is under the management of the Anglican Church of Kenya. Outside the church is a small graveyard with the remains of several colonialists and military men. They normally come for a memorial service every year and uh, they usually come as far as from Europe and the ones who are still within Girigil town 
and some other areas, maybe towns in Kenya. Lord Galbraith Coal, whose Kikope Ranch was sold to a cooperative society in the 1970s and who was among the first settlers to import white sheep into the country, had some troubled times at the ranch. He had a herd of cattle alongside with the sheep, but uh, you find that uh, one day we had an African worker who stole one of his sheep. He had to shoot him and eventually he had to de de be deported back. But Cole would not keep away from Kenya. He returned secretly. But he came in a mysterious way. They had to hide him in a coffin and he just came back to Kenya. But over a sudden now he was crippled in one way. But because of the ailment, then one day he had to shoot himself. That was in 1929. Lord Galbraith Cole cut short his life at the age of 48. But this church, which was dedicated to him by his widow Eleanor Cole, still stands. The National Museums of Kenya uh, carry on this prehistoric site. We felt that uh, it's a monument, it's a kind of a monument which needs to be restored and preserved. With minor restoration efforts to ensure the structural integrity of this building, the Anglican Church has managed to maintain the original architectural design of this church close to seven decades later. Rita Tinina, KTN, at the ACK Goodwall Church in Gilgil, Nakuru County. Thanks for that. Make a point of visiting it if you can during the festive season.